Today I'm gonna to tackle my first project. So before we get back to the video, I wanna share with you guys how excited I am to get this part of my life going. The part of my life to where I'm just not scared anymore. The part of my life to where I don't care what the outcome is right now. I just wanna get out there, I just wanna try new things, and I wanna learn, and I wanna grow. That's the part of my life I'm looking forward to right now. All right, now we can get back to the video. So a lot of you guys know I've been wanting to get into hardscaping, getting into new pavers, uh, maybe even some retaining walls, but I was always a little scared, didn't know how to start, didn't know what to do. And I made the decision this year to just go for it. Try it, fail, learn, just go for it, see what happens. So today what I did, the first thing I did this morning is I went by my local Site One Supply. Talk with those guys, kind of make sure I'm on the right track. They gave me a lot of good information. They also have a class coming up the first week of February. It's a two day class and it's all about hardscaping. And man, I couldn't be more excited. So just real quick, let me show you what I got going on right now. This here is a slab that's been in my backyard ever since we bought the house. I assume they had some kind of shed on here, whatever. The slab is kind of uneven, kind of breaking up. Didn't really know what to do with it. I've been wanting this out of here for a long time. So I've decided I'm gonna use this as kind of my test spot. I'm gonna kill two birds with one stone. I'm gonna get this concrete out of here today and we're gonna use this area right here to practice. So I got Jesse coming over here, here in a little bit. He's actually bringing a dump trailer that we're borrowing from a friend of ours to kind of help with the removal of the concrete. So Jesse's gonna be helping me on a lot of the, uh, the patio stuff that I'm gonna be doing and all the practice, because he wants to learn just as much as I do. So I thought, what, what better way to do that than we can both do it together, we can learn together. So obviously the first thing I have to do is I have to move all the stone off of here, because we're, like I said, we're gonna use this as the kind of the practice area. So that, that's gonna be a chore in itself. All right, so there was about 500 of these paper bricks to move. Um, it took about 30 minutes. It was a little bit hard work, but not that big of a deal. But after doing this, we decided to go and rent a dingo. And I did this for two different reasons. The first reason is pretty obvious. I just didn't want to spend all day breaking up concrete with a sledgehammer, throwing it into the trailer, and having to do everything kind of the hard way. I wanted to get this part done. I wanted to get started on my paper patio. And like I said, I just didn't want to spend all day doing this by hand. So the second reason was I wanted to play with the dingo. I wanted to get the experience of tearing out a concrete slab. I wanted to get the experience of, you know, digging down six inches and, and getting the ground dug out so we can put the sub base in for the paper patio. I wanted to just play around with it and get used to it and have some fun. All right, so that was that was actually pretty fun. I rode dingoes before, just kind of doing grading stuff, but nothing like that. I think I got a lot of learning to do. You can definitely tell the difference. This side, Jesse did. That's my side. I I tend to d dig deep down, but we'll get there. That's all. That's why we're doing all this is to learn. Now we gotta go dump the concrete, right? Dump the concrete, come back, start measuring out our patio, and get started on that. Got too much weight on the front of the uh, dump trailer. It's not gonna dump. Oh my goodness. All right, damn battery's dead in the dump trailer. So, this is gonna suck. Where there's a will, there's a way. It's a good thing about diesels, I got two batteries. Oh yeah, my savior. Make sure I don't bust my butt getting down here. Is it gonna work? Let's see.
Whew, that would have been bad. There were some big pieces in there. Okay, so this is the part where we actually struggled a little bit was getting it all measured out and kind of getting a game plan of trying to make it level. I have two goals for this project. Number one is I want it to be level with the ground. So when you have the ground on both sides, I want it to just come paver and just be, be nice and level. So the second goal was I wanted it to be square. We were just gonna do a six by six square, but when I stand back and I look at it, I don't want it, you know the square to be like this. I want it to be nice and square. So that was my two goals. I want it to be level and I wanted it to be square. You know, we got to talking about slope, we got to talking about all different types of things, and me personally, I just started kind of getting confused. I didn't know, know where to go. And so what I did is I reached out to a friend of mine. So his name is Alex Nickens. He's with Nickens Lawn and Landscape. Him and his brother, they do awesome work. They do uh, a lot of patios, a lot of landscaping and, and bigger projects like that. Kind of the stuff that I'm wanting to get into. So I asked him if he would be willing to kind of make a brief video kind of showing how you get it to be level, how you kind of have your, have your runoff, uh, how do you plan for all that kind of stuff. So let's take a look. The most important part to a nice patio is getting the correct level. So say this is your patio right here. You've got a stake in this corner, a stake in this corner, a stake in this corner, and a stake in this corner. You're gonna want a little bit of slope going over to one corner. So say this is your house over here. You got your house back in here. You want everything going away from your house. Or this is your garden area. You want everything going away from that area into the grass. So you'll get a little bit of slope on this line going this way, and with that you'll use your line levels. So you'll have your, say this is your highest point right here. You're gonna put your string line around that stake at this point, and you're gonna run it down here. You're gonna put a little bit of slope on that. You just get the bubble a little bit closer to the line, or maybe on the line, depending on your ratio. You need to check in your area what the correct slope is, and you can find that on Google. So have a little bit of slope going this way, and then you wrap your string line around that pole. Then you're going to go over to this corner, and with that, again, you're going to want a little bit of slope heading this way. Then you're coming back up here, and you're going to have a little bit of slope going up this time because you're going to want the patio running that way. And then when you come over to this fourth corner, again, you're going to have a little bit of slope coming up. So it's slope down, slope down, slope up, slope up. Okay, so the next thing we had to do was we had to figure out how much dirt we had we needed to dig out to get the proper level with the ground that we wanted our pavers to be at. So everybody I had talked to, even the site one guy, had told me a good rule of thumb is six inches of sub base, one inch of sand, and then you got your pavers. So normally you would go six inches, your one inch of sand, that's seven inches. Our pavers are two inches and three eighths. So you're looking almost nine and a half feet we would have had to go down to do this job correctly. Since this was a test area, I didn't really feel like we had to dig all that out and do exactly six inches of sub base because it is just a test area. So to save time digging and to save time in materials, we decided just to put four inches of sub base down and go from there. I think we might have made one, one little mistake. I think when, whenever you're marking it out, you're supposed to put it on the outside too because now our marks are gone. Or exactly we want it. Because we're like when you're doing, I mean, like, I mean, this is a test area, so it really don't matter where we put it, but if we were doing like up there, we would, I mean, you gotta be exact. Now we'd have to measure it all out again, right? If we were to put our marks out here, then we would still have a, a little, you know, point of reference. So now basically we're just, as far as measuring and marking, we're doing it all over again. So I think that's mistake number probably five that I've done so far. So now it's time to add our sub base. And one thing I'll say about the sub base is I don't think it's the right stuff because a lot of the videos I've watched, they use kind of a limestone uh, type sub base. This one here looked like it was uh, just a mixture of dirt and rock and it looked a little bit more dirt than rock and it just didn't look look right so i'm gonna have to double check with our with our supply guys and make sure we got the right stuff here i was told it was called ab3 so i went and i got ab3 they loaded this up for me it just doesn't look right when we were leaving there we seen another stuff that was called ab3 yellow and that looked more limestone and it looked like more uh more rock in it but i don't know so i'm gonna have to double check on that 
Um, it seemed to compact very well, but we didn't use a big compactor. We just used the hand tamper. And the reason for that is we just didn't want to rent another machine. You know, I, obviously I know that it needs to be compacted. What I'll do in the future on a real job and not the, not the test area is I'll put a couple inches down, I'll compact it, put a couple inches down, compact it, and keep doing that until I get my desired compaction and depth. So this is kind of all we got done that day. We, we got everything, all the concrete out of there. We got it dug out. We got the sub base in. We still need to add about an inch of sub base to it. And then we're going to screed it with the sand and put our pavers in and kind of just see how it looks, see how we did, see how it matches up with everything. And like I said, guys, this is the first first time I'm doing this. This is not an actual real job. We're, we're using the test site to practice things. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this little six by six patio on one side of it. On the other side of it, I want to do a circle. And then maybe in the middle of it, I want to do some bricks or whatever. I'm just going to, I want to practice different things and I want to do different, different patterns, different things. And the more I measure and the more, more I do that kind of stuff, the more it's going to become second, second nature. So I will definitely be showing you guys kind of the, the, the screening of the sand and the final pavers and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we're going to be getting into that here in probably a day or two. Uh, we're actually supposed to have some really nice weather coming up, like some sixties. A lot of days in the 50s, a couple days in the 60s, so I'm going to be spending a lot of time outside working on this, this kind of stuff. All right, so the day is winding down. Uh, we're getting close to being out of sunlight, but I wanted to kind of show you the progress. We actually got the sub base in, and we're pretty close to getting some sand and putting the pavers on. And the idea with this test area is right here we're going to do a 6x6 six six, uh, with those pavers over there. Over here, we're going to do a circle. I want to practice a circle. And then in the middle, we're gonna do something else just to kind of, just to play around. You gotta get out there, you gotta try new things. And this is what I'm doing, I'm loving it. I'm having a blast, I'm learning a lot. 